Hey, this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. This is Monday. It's June the 13th. Uh, this will be our chart lesson for today, and this is going to be a rather quick uh, chart lesson today. And this may be our last one a week. I don't leave our last chart lesson this week. Uh, I don't leave town until um, Thursday. But I've got some other things that have come up that are going on that I'm going to have to take care of before I leave since I'm going to be gone for two weeks. It's going to be a little hectic trying to do this. So what I'm going to do, actually just to fill you in, um, interesting story. I, I've got a, um, a weekend lake house that I take my family to. And my son and brother went up there this weekend. Um, uh, I let them use it for the weekend, and they were going to get the boat out and get it ready for the summer. And uh, the boat stored on a boat lift um, down on the water, and it's about five or six feet off the water. And it's the boat's covered, and the, the boat lift is enclosed and covered. But somehow a mother raccoon got inside my boat and had babies in this boat. And so these baby raccoons have literally destroyed the inside of my boat. Uh, so... Not really the kind of news you're hoping to hear at any time, much less four days before you're leaving the country for two weeks. And so I've got to get some stuff together for the insurance on it and so forth. So that's going to keep me tied up. Uh, so this may be the um, this may be the only um, chart lesson we have this week. I'm sorry, I had an interruption, but anyway, long story short, I got boat problems, insurance problems to collect. I'm gonna have to figure out what the insurance is going to do to uh, repair my boat, but basically it's ruined. So I don't know if it's going to be totaled or not, but, uh, but it, it, you know, uh, it's only a couple years old and, um, and needless to say, our, we don't have a boat for the summer at this point. So, uh, but anyway, let's get to trading. That's just side subject and that's my issue, <laughs> but I thought it was interesting. Uh, I've never had something like that happen. Raccoons. Um, if you know anything about raccoons, there's some, mischievous little rascals and uh and that's probably an understatement based on what they've done to my boat so but let's talk about this let's get through this real quick because i've got to leave town it's about two hours to my condo and i got to get on the road and get up there and get this taken care of and get back so i can get ready to go to brazil but probably won't be a chart lesson tomorrow for sure because i won't be trading i'll be up there and uh, i'll be back in here wednesday i'm gonna try to trade wednesday and thursday so if i do we may have a chart lesson uh, but if you don't hear from me, you know I've gone, and uh, there probably won't be any answers to emails while I'm gone, other than uh, people having problems downloading manuals or something like that. I'll check for that, but I'm not going to probably be answering uh, while I'm on vacation. I'm not going to be answering any questions, so please don't even send me any questions during that time. Save them till we get back, because I don't want to come back to 500 messages to have to work through either. So if you will, unless it's something critical, just hold your questions and answers until we get back, and then we'll go from there. So, But uh, you'll know when I'm back because I'll post the video. Uh, but just let me look at my calendar real quick. Um, we are going to be back. I'll probably be back in the office on the 24th. Uh, we'll probably have a chart lesson on the 24th of June, at the very least the 25th. Um, but most likely, uh, I'll be back in the office working on the 24th, and we'll, if, if so, we'll have a lesson that day. But it'll, the latest, it'll be June 25th. So uh, save your questions and stuff till then. Let's do, let's get through this real quick. Again, it's going to be a real quick chart lesson because I'm pressed for time. i got to get on the road here. But uh, I'll show you what I saw today. It's really just a trading range. Uh, we had a little trend down, a trend up, and then another trend back down. We made a little bit of a higher high here. Uh, but it was fairly standard trading range day. I saw this possible trend channel as well that seemed to be in play, but it broke. And so then I was looking for, you know, I'll, I've shown you this a few times how we do the measured. Usually when these break, and I just measured it like so. And drop this down, and so that put the line to right there. And you can see we got really close to that before it bounced. So uh, that tends to get you really close. Uh, you can see that, and you bring it down, and you drop it in there, and 
we missed that by maybe a tick, maybe two ticks at the most. I think it's about a tick. So that usually gets you close to the bounce. And my guess is we may trade on down here until we touch that before we go higher. We may even break below that and go lower than that. I just don't know. But um, but that's what I saw for today. Uh, but I would characterize this as a range day. And these are basically your lows. And these are your highs. We broke above it. We got a little below it. And then a little above it. And then we never could. This actually kind of moved up a little bit right into here. And so I'd call it there for now. Uh, so really tight range. It's hard to trade these things if you don't find some kind of trend channel to follow. And so that's why I'm always telling people you got to follow these trend channels and you got to get them right. And you can see um, that we, we broke this one, made a new low, then we traded up. We broke this one, made a new high, and then we traded down. And we couldn't quite get a new low yet right here, but this support's just been too strong. And we kind of bounced off of that. So... Uh, but it's when it gets in the middle in here where it gets kind of hairy. Uh, but if you've got your trend line drawn, it should keep you on the right side, should keep you moving to the right direction. And really what I see is four smaller little ranges in here since we're talking about it. And we'll move this back down here and I'll show this to you. So this is another way to do this. Um, we were in this little range to begin with. Then we drop down an equal amount, and you can see that. And then once we got down, we made another one of about, um, and if you draw that equal amount, you can see that's about where we bounced right there. So actually, if you bring that right up to where it was, that's exactly where we bounced on that low. And uh, so that kind of keeps you, you know, this measured move stuff works on every level and every way you try to do it. And so... Use those measured moves. Try to, you know, look for your targets and where you expect the bounce to come. And that would have given you an idea to buy this low right here and ride this all the way up. So um, there's actually a long right here, but I didn't like this one. But we'll talk about that. Let's talk about the trades real quick, and then I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to call it a day. And maybe I'll see you Wednesday. Maybe I won't see you till the 24th. So, but. We had a trend channel going up. We had a break. We really had a break and a new high, but we had this double bottom right here. And when we bounced off that, uh, I still was thinking short possibly, but we never really got a good short set up. And then we got a failed second entry short that created a trap. And you know how those usually go higher, and that was an easy scalp. Um, and then now we had the break, uh, a couple legs up to a new high, and then we had a long trap here. Uh, that turned down. This one was a little aggressive. You're better to wait on a second entry, uh, but I marked it in green because I took it. Easy scalp. In fact, any runners would be good here. Uh, and you got a second entry short here off a suspected trend line. Easy move down. Again, any runners were, were safe, and you could have ridden this all the way down to the lows. Uh, but then you had a two-legged pullback. This was the first real break of the trend line. Uh, prices broke higher first and then turned down for a second entry, so you go short. Let me back out a little bit, make this a little easier to see. Notice we broke above. Here's your bar. It broke above first and then turned down, so I had my stop sitting there. Um, easy move down. It, it, it bounced a little bit, and that's to be suspected there. And that might have even, I almost drew this one in green, and that might have even, you know, tempted you to, to stay out of that trade um, but generally you're going to get a new low at least you're going to retest those lows and so there's enough room there so I like this trade uh, then when you had the failed second entry long now you got a trap that's probably going to push on through that strong support and you can see it did that so here's your signal bar on the first one your stop goes there and then if you entered on this one your stop goes right there either way easy trades Stops were never really threatened. Um, I can't remember. Did I talk about this one? The only reason I drew this was because it's a failed break below this triple bottom here, and there's enough room to get out. It's real aggressive because there hasn't been a break of the trend line yet, but it's an overshoot. Um, so I felt like it was looking like a trading range, and that I felt like that was worth taking, and it was an easy trade. Um, you didn't get anything more than a scalp out of it. but uh, And really, I should have drawn this one probably in green too. Um, 
and it's a second entry long as well, but there's a lot of overlap there. So you would have wanted to probably, probably uh, try to drop a limit order in there. And I didn't take this because I really thought we were going to go down here. Uh, I really thought we'd at least push lower and create a trap there, but we went higher. And then I didn't like entering at the EMA, but when we had a failed second entry short, you know what usually happens there. Um, I wasn't sure whether this was going to be this line. Still hadn't grabbed the right line. It was going to be over here, and it may be right there, actually. It actually looks better right there, so I'm thinking that's probably it. Um, but a failed second entry short, it's another trap. Coming off a of low. Um, plenty of room to scalp out before you get up here, and you can see it rocketed right on back up to the highs. And uh, we turned down there, then we bounced off the trend line again. Second, that's a two-legged pullback to the EMA trend line. You can't ignore those. Uh, you just about got to take those. Okay, I'm sorry, but you had the uh, two-legged pullback to the EMA and the trend line. Second entry long right there. Um, this is one of those where you probably wanted to use a limit order, and you see it came back, and it still went higher. I, it took forever to fill this one. I got so frustrated with it, I almost exited, but I hung on knowing that you're probably going to get a new high, and guess what? We did, and then it turned down, but we, but we also had this possible trend line based off of these highs up here, and you can see that, and at first I had it here, and then I drug it down here, and we got back inside that, so we were bouncing off of it. I didn't like going long here, but when we made that fat, that turn down and made a higher low with the second entry long, uh, I felt pretty sure we may go ahead and make another new high. And again, it got it just really struggled to get higher, but it did. And I didn't feel like it was worth entering anywhere after that. And then we broke above. We made a second entry long. It failed, turned down, and uh, a great place to get short. This is one of those where you might have used a limit order, but if you did, you might have got left behind on this one too because it, it took on off. And again, and then you got to assume, hey, we're headed to the lower side, and guess where we went? Right to the lower side. And um, again, here's another two-legged pullback to the EMA. There's a double, triple top kind of across here with a one-tick trap. It was better to wait on this bar and enter with a limit order once, or either put a stop below it. And uh, easy move down, no runners. Another two-legged pullback to the EMA. I didn't like entering on this bar, but when it ticked higher, that's a look at that. First entry long, kind of pullback, kind of a second entry long. So it's kind of like a little trap right there. And look at that reversal bar. You had to be quick on that and with a stop. Another easy move. Um, then we pulled back, and I think this is the one, but somebody asked me about the failure here. And now we've got a broader double bottom. There's too much overlap to enter, so you have to wait on a second entry. Uh, you don't want to enter on a first entry, even though that's a possible trend line, which I think it was. But you can see we went higher. We, you need to make, wait on the break of this. We broke it here, two legs up. They made a double top. Then we reversed. So I like that one going short right there. Um, another easy scalp came right back and got the runners. And I was done with it. I'd had enough for today. Um, that was later than I really wanted to trade. But... Um, you know, I, I was just kind of continuing to watch it here. There was another short right here, another failed second entry. First, notice you got a first entry long, pull back second entry long off this double top. Um, it really didn't fail. I believe it got enough to, um, your entry was 42.50. So it did get enough to get a scalp out of that, but it didn't go one tick further and then it kind of turned down. So that's good enough for a trap. Same thing, another easy scalp. And then guess what? We bounced off that low again. Uh, I didn't, I, you know, you don't need to be trading this late. You might have taken that short, and I'll go ahead and mark it. And that was pretty much it for today. And I feel like I rushed through this, and I'm sorry, but I've just got a lot of things going on before I go to vacation, some personal issues that we discussed. So uh, it's just a typical trading range day, and you got to draw these short-term trend lines. We're finding that more and more. Uh, that if you don't draw these, you're not going to be on the right side of the market. So make sure you draw them. Uh, make sure you you recognize that this is a trading range. And if you back out, I think it's pretty obvious, fairly obvious, that's a trading range. And we could have broke on lower and it might have been down here. But a lot of times where you have a gap like that, that's going to be an important point 
and you notice we tested it and couldn't go below it and then we tested it again and made a higher low and then we tested it again and made an even higher low but if you drew these lines and you know you might have even considered this one was here and there was the break and then the move back down we still didn't quite get a new low though but we may not get one sometimes if the trading range is the support's too strong we can't get back down there to make the new low that's sometimes that happens so uh, but that's what I saw for today and um, just a pretty typical slow kind of choppy rangy day that you had to be real careful or you get whipsawed uh, draw these little trading range you know your trend lines and your and you know if you got it right if it's holding prices you can see how this is neatly holding prices on both sides uh, even at the top here you can see this one neatly holding prices till you get the break this one the same thing till you get the break and then to move higher so you got to draw those there's no other way to really stay on the right side other than waiting for the double bottoms and things like that uh, or the double tops and the failed breaks and the little traps and you get a lot of little traps but you can get trapped both ways you might see a long trap and then try to enter it and find out you got trapped to the long side uh, or to the short side while prices continue higher so you got to be real careful even with the traps and make sure you're reading the short-term trend lines correctly so but anyway I'm gonna wrap it up for the day uh, like I said most likely no unless I get back really early tomorrow which I doubt it there will be no lesson tomorrow and this could be the last one before the 24th but I'll be back on the 24th 25th at the latest of June uh, again hold your uh, questions uh, and emails unless it's a emergency type nature from downloading a manual or something like that that you're having a problem with otherwise I probably will not answer and uh, I don't want to uh, hopefully I don't have a million emails piled up when I get back so if you'll just uh, I would appreciate it if you would kind of hold them until you till I get back and we'll go from there but um, be careful over the next two weeks I'll be curious I'll probably be checking the market just to see what I'm missing, I, I my, you know, I promised my family I'll try to stay away from it and try to have a real vacation. But I, I'm addicted to this stuff, so I'll be checking the, uh, the numbers every day just to see if we're trending up or down or if I'm missing anything. But I'm gonna wrap it up. I'll see you next time. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. Have a good one.